Hi guys, Jay Smith here. Welcome to the i-series review comparison matchup thing. So we've got i525, i230 and i59. No iBlade. iBlade is gone. iBlade went last year, I think i59 replaced it. Um, we do have Blueprint, but Blueprint is a beast among itself. And we are not gonna be touching Blueprint at all because it is tiny. I've got them in the same shaft. It is the Project X 6.0, um, standard length and all this stuff. So I've got the AFS heads, so I can keep this thing exactly the same and just change the heads. Um, I've got it set at a hole. I have just realized just now, I've got it set as a wood, so I am gonna have to change the data sets. So I'll do, I'll do that anyway. Um, but I will do the looks to feel on this hole. Lots of water there. That could go horribly wrong. Um, but remember guys, stay to the end of the video because at the end of the review, I do the forgiveness testing. And that forgiveness testing means I test all of these golf clubs, not just from the middle, but from low on the face, heel, toe, all the different spots where amateurs generally hit it. I-525 has uh, 30.5 degrees of loft, so it is stronger. So we're gonna see a difference in loft anyway because of loft over the i230 and i59, and I think they've got 33 and 34 respectively. So yeah, we are talking about nearly a club's difference in rawness, uh, and that's gonna come from loft anyway. Uh, hollow head design, so being a player's distance, hollow head design. Uh, remember when it comes to hollow heads, hybrids, fairway woods and drivers, they make a different noise, distinctly different noise to an iron. So Ping have opted to put some polymer inside to try and quieten the old girl down. Um, all manufacturers, when they're making hollow head designs, they'll stick something inside the head to quieten acoustics because obviously you don't want a hybrid or a fairy wood acoustics from an iron head. It's just not very um, nice basically. Um, you have got uh, heel and toe tungsten weights in this one, so you've got them in the tip of the shaft and also in the toe of the golf club. That is to increase MOI, resistance to twist, off center hits, forgiveness, and all that lot. And I will say this thing straight away. Um, the more testing I do against 525 and the more custom fitting I do when it comes to people, just general golfers hitting 425, G425 against I525, this thing is damn near as good as a 425. Micromax grooves, so we have got 17 trillion of them down there, but we have got that white line up line, which I like. All of all ping irons now, it's, it's just nice having that perpendicular line to target. It just frames it nicely. Blade lengths aren't too big. Offset is not much whatsoever. Top lines are fairly thin, or no, well, actually though they're not. They're medium, I would say, but because they're curved, they look fairly thin than soles. Yeah, medium-ish, not anything like Blueprint. This is not gonna be enough like Blueprint, it's not gonna make an appearance today. Um, right, let's go give this one in. We've got 167 yards over water. Let's go see how it feels. Slightly low on the face, but pretty decent hit. This is gonna go over the, over the uh, pin, yep. Yeah. Um, good. It is a distinctly higher pitched explosive crack. Um, it is not soft at all. Um, I have got the 230, and it's only because I've been doing a lot recently with the i230, that I get used to a kind of sound, basically, from ping, and the core i525 is a little bit more rocket-like. Uh, but it is confidence inspiring. I do, I do quite like that kaboom. Um, it's like that go ball. Um, it's, n it's not soft, but it is. I can understand why people would blend this as well, going from an I say I two thirty to a, an I five two five in longer irons. But um, it actually, yeah, it's, it feels fine. Absolutely fine. Oh, that's a miss hit. I didn't really want to do miss hits this early on, but you can see that. Oh, don't go in with a miss hit. That'd be disgusting, wouldn't it? No, that's cool. Um, <laughs> That was good delivery, low heel. Um, eight mil, nine mil low, three mil heel. So it's just no more low than anything else. So I could feel the heel, but um, that felt distinctly worse than it actually was. Uh, we lost distance, yes we did because of the strike, um, but it kept its line 0.9 yards off line. Well done I-525. It's got all that help you see, so when I don't quite do my job properly, low on my face is always gonna be my miss. Oh, I've done it again. <sighs> two for two. <sighs> Look at that. That's doing well. 
That is doing well. Let's go give it one more go. I was going to do three with each, but have you seen my strike pattern there? It's averaging distinctly low, um, but it's doing well. It's five yards offline with a distinctly seven mil heel, seven mil low. Generally speaking, golf clubs do not like heel and low. So let's see if we can get a half a decent hit. Yeah, slightly left, better hit though. And there you go, there's your full on carry. Oh, I've sped up a bit, naughty me. So I've added to the distance by me dialing the speed up a fraction, but yeah, there you go. That's much better when it comes to um, distance, strike and everything else. But you can definitely hear the a bit more of an explosive bang off the face. Um, especially now I'm gonna go I2, I230. I230 audibly is slightly duller. But uh, right, let's go change data sets because I'm terrible for changing data sets. So we're not gonna see that pink, purple, fuchsia, whatever color that is line, which is great because we're gonna need a little bit of separation. Um, and then, yeah, flick over to i230 and compare what the difference in sound and feel and looks are. So back now with i230, data set change, we do have a different color. Um, i230, different to i525, is i525 being a hollow head design and a little bit more raw when it comes to lofts. This is not a hollow head design. This is a standard design like the i210. i230 is an upgrade as such to uh, an i210. Again, I've done a video on the difference between i210 and i230. Little card up on the screen if you want to go have a look at that one once you're finished. But it's possibly my favorite of the whole of the uh, ping rat. Okay, my absolute favorite would be blueprint because it's tiny, it looks lovely, and it's pure forging and stuff like that. Um, these aren't quite like, now this is a 431 stainless steel body, if I remember. Yeah, if, I, if I'm wrong, I'll put it up on the screen. Um, but it's got plenty of activated elastomer. Now, the i525 had polymer to try and quieten the old girl down because of its hollow body design. Um, this has got activated elastomer in its, well, everything. There is plenty of it underneath there, more so than the i210. Uh, it's got heel and toe tungsten weighting to try and help those off center hits. And with the way I'm hitting today, I feel like I could be testing quite a few of those out. Um, and it has got 70 trillion grooves, Micromax grooves. There is a unification throughout the whole of the I series now. They all seem to have seven trillion grooves. Um, but we still have the white lineup line, which I really like from Ping. We've got hardly any offset. I mean, that's a properly nice looking uh, player's iron. Blade lengths aren't too big, and obviously when it comes to the four and five irons and stuff like that, they, if, if anything, they get slightly smaller because apparently the tour likes it. Um, so if you are gonna be having a set of I-230 and you're gonna run a four iron in it, not many people have a four iron nowadays, just be wary of how small they get. Um, but yeah, it's a nice looking golf club. It's got a newly designed badge at the back covering all that lovely activated elastomer. <laughs> Uh, what's the, I tell you what, if you look at the difference between the sole thicknesses, yes, this is a slightly thinner than the i525, but the um, top line, basically exactly the same. But because it's curved, you don't really see it that much. Right, let's go give this a go. Um, I did four with the other one, so that means I'm gonna have to do four with this with the i559, which has now increased the risk of me hitting the drink. It's not bad, face slightly open. 0.7, I just saw it on there, but it's nice. That was slightly toey. Um, the diff, okay, straight away, the feel difference, and it is that sound. Um, this sounds nicer, feels nicer. I-525 is a bit more explosive, but this is nice. I do like the I-230. My I the I-230 reviews that I've done and any kind of compares that I've done has never failed. I, I just, the tie two thirties is such a such a nice golf club. It really, really is. I could so game I two thirty, really could. Um, the fact that I didn't used to like that little cut out at the back. Um, it's purely because of the bending. So that little cut out at the back that you see there when it comes to all or the vast majority of ping um, irons. Blueprint hasn't got it, true forging. Um, that's for bending. So when the guy gets his hammer and bangs it into lie angle and stuff like that, it's quite, it's quite aggressively brutal, but very precise at the same time. Right, let's give it another go. If they all feel like that, then yeah. 
Oh, I 230. He's just so nice. Ah, oh, Ping, you've made a really nice gold club in I230. Really have done. Um, I don't really want to go over to I59 now. I just want to stop the review saying there that, yeah, I230 is nice. <laughs> but I, I would say I525 is much, I, is more forgiving than I230, I would say that. I mean, it, it's a, um, it is a hollow body, bigger head design. Oh, I'm gonna try and, no, it's the same shot. <laughs> Slightly less uh, in distance, um, but yeah. Four shots, I do like I-230. Right, let's go flick over to I-59. Let's go change data sets again. We always have to have a different color line, because um, oh, I just forget. Um, and see what the differences are between this one and the I-59. The I-59 has got some Illumi cores going on, so we'll have to quick chat about the tech inside of that. Um, and then remember, stay tuned for the back end of the review, guys, because we've got some forgiveness data of all of these three heads. I-59 time now, flicked over the heads. Remember, same shaft. I-59 is an interesting golf club, not only from its price point, and yes, uh, price really shouldn't come a part of these reviews, but when it comes to a comparison, I think it should do. When it comes to the I-525 and the I-230, they are both um, retailed, marketed at the same price point. I-59 is a somewhat more expensive object to purchase. Um, it is a different golf club. It is the iBlade replacement as such, because Blueprint is so small and that's not even the same realm of iBlade. I mean, iBlade is a G range compared to a Blueprint. Um, I-59, so it has got some technology in this head. So that's why it is more expensive than the rest of them. When I say more expensive, all of them got technology, but this has got a Lumicore, not Halumicore, that's cheese. You don't want cheese inside. Yeah, a Lumicore. Basically, it redistributes weights around, so they are popping weight in different spots on this head, basically to try and make it as forgiving as possible. And it is not a very big head at all. This thing is a lovely looking, tiny little ping head. Ping don't, generally speaking, make tiny golf clubs. They are known for their G ranges especially, and this thing looks lovely. Top lines are relatively thin. Sole thicknesses are relatively thin. Blade lengths are relatively small. Offset is relatively little. <laughs> uh, yeah, it's a nice, nice looking. It's the most players looking golf club out of all three for sure. But it's a different sound. Mmm, now that is different. That was decently hit, slightly low on the face, but fairly middle. Um, that noise is different. Yeah, seven mil low, zero mil top, yeah. So that is different, that is different. Um, where you had I-230, I-525, I was expecting that little bit more of a louder, higher pitched uh, impact noise, because um, obviously it's hollow head and all that lot. But with I-230, all that activated elastomer, really makes a difference when it comes to the feel of i230 this that alumi core alumi core um, that makes it sound much more like a 525 it's a higher pitch crack so if you're looking for deadness of sound 230 if you don't mind a little bit of yeah i59 but it's the most it's the best looking of the lot though because this is like a, if you're looking for a player's yeah head does look lovely, this thing does. So, so nice to look at. That wasn't buttoned. Slightly good delivery. High, I'm slightly low on the face and slightly healy as well. Remember, this has got a boatload of help when it comes to it. Um, nine mil low, four mil heel. Yeah, I felt that one. Oh, delivery. Nought, 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 nought. Um, when it comes to it though, um, my favorite so far is 230 to hit. I, uh, it's not that I don't like the feeling of I-59, it's fine, uh, but I'm expecting, when I'm looking at something like this, I'm expecting it to feel softer, deader, dull, muted, whatever it would be. Um, and it's a bit of a surprise going to a smaller head chassis size and for it to actually feel or sound louder. Interesting. That's a push. That's a me, 
That's a me aligning to the right and a me with a slightly open face. It's fine. It's middle to slightly low on the face again. I'm a classic low person when it comes to on the face. That's why I group my strikes if I'm going to miss. Three mil toe, eight mil low. Yep, aim out to the right slightly and then left my face open. That's why it's gone seven yards right. Um, but the feel of it, it is distinctly louder than the 9230 or at least higher pitched in its crispness of strike. Nothing wrong with it whatsoever, it's just that's what it does. Um, let's go give it one more hit because I haven't hit the drink yet. And, I've, and this is now 12 goes. And I haven't hit the drink yet. <laughs> oh, don't go in. Oh, it's not got enough forward momentum. Oh, and it's turning off that way anyway. Um, it's a it's a really very very nice golf club. Uh, it looks the best of the lot. Eight mil low, uh, four mil toe. I'm so, just low, just consistently quarter of an inch or so low on the face. Um, but yeah, it's my favourite when it comes to looks. It's not my favourite when it comes to sound. I two thirty has that one. It's just a softer, nicer feeling hit. Um, it's got all the forgiveness in the i59 that you wouldn't expect from a player, uh, player's iron of this size. So what I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna go give this, get it off here, go on the Foresight range and do some boring hits because I need to test all of these from all over the face. So again, I've hit a couple low today so you can actually see what happens when, well, yeah, just like um, live as such. But um, let's go do a lots and lots of shots where we can actually see how well all these three work from the middle, yes, but then also work from say places like extreme toe, heel and low. So we can actually say when it comes to you guys looking at if you want to go like compare or you're looking at actually do a bind decision between these, you know your strike patterns, etc. which one of these three irons could work for you best? So guys, to prevent this from being a video marathon, I've decided to put this video into two parts. For the guys that are watching live, if you go on my channel, part two will be up in a couple of minutes. For the guys that are watching afterwards, if you click one of the boxes beside me, that'll link you to part two, where we look at the performance and the forgiveness.